Welcome back to my garage. I've uh, I've made a decision, and this will please you. I'm not gonna pursue the ludicrous transmission ideas. Now, I'm gonna get this engine started, get it tested, find out if the 100% of bore exhaust port with the retained ring if that works or try to make it work it probably doesn't out of the box I'm just going to assemble the bare minimum for it to run no secondary intake no exhaust just a little stub better get started will be a bumpy road down a treacherous path of trap leaden path I've honed the bottom half of the cylinder. It had a slight taper, it was uh, tighter here than uh, up here. Uh, went by feel. It's still a little bit tight in the bottom here. So we'll probably need to take off a bit more. But I wanted to be able to insert the piston and the, my nickel seal coating is already gone in some places here so um, as long as it's not too tight it's probably better for testing than if it's uh, just aluminium anyways the reason I uh, I stopped honing is I wanted to test with the piston ring the piston with the piston ring in it and we have a problem it slides in okay then it gets looser, there's some crud in here, I should clean it better. And then it snags on the exhaust port. Like predicted. <laughs> because when it encounters the exhaust port, there's, there's no tension keeping the ring in anymore. And it springs out to its maximum position. And that maximum position needs to be less than what it is now. The clearances were, were just guesstimates. So, um, so it, but it needs to be tighter. It needs to protrude less from the piston. First possible solution is less spring tension, less static tension. These rings and the piston, it's kind of a work in progress. I know uh, Mark, Mark Atkinson, who made this, uh, this extremely nice pistons and rings. I know he was talking about the, um, the heat treating process and uh, he hadn't honed in the, the, um, the hardness yet. Uh, they're kind of stiff compared to, to regular rings. They're more malleable. So I can actually compress them. Like these were the same before I played some with this one earlier. Another thing that might be better is just making the ring thinner or radially thinner. So having it protrude less from the piston. I'll test with a, with a more compressed ring with less tension and see how that behaves now by hand in the bore here. And uh, if it's not satisfactory, I'll see if I can um, mount this in the lathe somehow and sand it down a slight bit.
it's better, not good enough. I really think we need to take the diameter of this uh, ring down a little bit, so I'll meet you at the lathe. <laughs> Initial testing is negative. It seems it seems like a difficult task to not have this ring snag in the 100% of bore exhaust port because there's no there's nothing keeping it in there. Duh. I'm not giving up though. This is not the not my final attempt. But I think to get this, there's more to this engine than just the 100% of bore exhaust port. So I'll show you that in a minute. Main focus now is to get the engine ready, 100% of bore exhaust port or not, and have it ready for Bonneville. Then continue developing the 100% of bore exhaust ports. Have to do some thinking here. We're not done with this yet. I really do want to run the Speed of Cheese Mark Atkinson pistons though, but without the stepped ring in normal cylinders. There's more to this cylinder than the 100% of bore exhaust port. Large radius between the bore and the transfers, like the tra transfer bore interface here. Nice uniform flow. The angles of the transfer walls are retained from beginning to, from the entrance to the exit here. That's to get the most control possible over the transfer flows. I'm going for a, for a lot of volume, thinking low velocity, high pressure versus high velocity, low pressure to keep the control and also the low velocity, high pressure might be less suspect to like penetration from the, the burnt, the, like the exhaust residue in the cylinder. I think I just got the most brilliant idea. How about we remove the piston ring completely from the piston and place it just above the exhaust port. Now this wouldn't work with a normal piston ring. The piston would just hit it and that would be it. But what if the piston ring is shaped like this? So this is the wall 
and this is the ring. And it doesn't have to be a narrow light ring because it's not supposed to move, it's stationary. Imagine this is the ring, the piston on the upstroke, compression stroke, just passes the exhaust port, hits that ring, pushes it in and it clings to the piston wall. And now compression will force it into the wall, just like with a normal ring. It passes to TDC, combustion, on its way down combustion forces are forcing that ring into the piston, piston wall, just like with a normal ring, just opposite. And then just above the exhaust port, it passes the ring, releases, but it doesn't matter, because now the gases are supposed to flow out the exhaust port. And then the cycle repeats. This might be something. This might be better. This might be less less friction. Might be onto something. Might be onto something here. In my design there's a big radius, kind of a bevel, chamfer, whatever you want to call it, at the exhaust top edge. And that is needed with a normal piston ring and a bridge because it's so wide and it helps with gas flow. I remember how stupid I felt when I forgot to put that chamfer in before I plated the cylinder and I feel stupid now for not having it there because now with just a slight chamfer compared to what's supposed to be there it works. There's some resistance, but with a better chamfer. I'm optimistic again. Hooray. See you next time.